In today's episode, we will be going over some of the best highlights from the matchup between T1 and HLE during the lower finals of the 2024 LCK Spring Playoffs. Without further ado, let's dive straight into the action. Picking up already here, even with Zaka having a little bit of control mid lane, Peanut will come and suss this out, but he is on vision. Yeah, T1 with some priority here towards his bottom side. We'll move up as three. Try and answer this as Peanut pokes his head in. That is a decent searing charge, but Arc Consult gets Peanut out of there, but now won't have that Q available. That will be the Drake going over to T1. First mountain collected here for Ooh, Peanut, I believe, has slinked towards the north of this lane right now. It just wants Zayas to commit to a trade. The instrument ability aggressively. Oh, there's the hook! And Zelai throws out the lantern there as well. I don't think they'll require it. Isaiah looks to try and charge up that dash. Just amazing. Oh. The ult is going to go wide as well. The all out to bring Zayas out of there. And he didn't even need Ona's help. We'll be able to move first here from mid. So let's see what Zelai can actually get done here, Chain. Not quite going to connect, but there is the ram. It's going to get called, gets a knockoff only on to Delight right now. But his owner goes down so incredibly low. Super Mega Death Rocket coming in. Dawning Shadow to try and keep them alive. And Doran is just dashing around with reckless abandon. The Drake goes to harm the life. And they manage to pick up Deus. Emperor's Divide used just to get them the heck out of there. As off, what are you doing, mate? Uh, the fear of committing with the Emperor's Divide to try to kill uh, that enemy top laner who's teleported in, Doran is, uh, is we're gonna have a bit of a fight over this. Um, yeah. It's just that you, you don't know exactly the angle Zekka's gonna take, which still ultimately was their demise there, and the Emperor's Divide is used so late just to secure the rest of the members retreating. Could have been even worse there for the side of T1. Just a great angle from Zekka, and it felt like a heavy... Ooh, Peanut does move his way in, but Ona able to get himself out of there, and will be just fine. Um, Peanut gonna stop him one more time, as this is getting a little bit rough now. Zekka moving on over, there's the ulti, it does come on through, they dive on in. Empress Divide gonna be avoided here by the Yone, but in comes Gomiyushi, over the wall goes Peanut, but he's once again met with another T1 member, and they are routed where they stand. I mean, this is a huge overcommitment and backed off, uh, especially since they didn't have backup on the play. They are now looking for this Herald, though. T1 are moving to try and follow up, Zekka does have TP. Yeah, Doran has made it in. There is the teleport for the Yone. Zayas off on an angle, has a Mega Blast turn to get himself into that front line exactly where he wants to be. Death Sentence goes wide, and now Doran into the mist has been a bit immune, but Kumiyushi, he's not. The Yone dives on top of him. Super Mega Death Rocket needs yet another fight. Started off with a Jinx getting excited as Ona not able to get his own reset. Great hook, but it's onto Zayas. That's not a priority target. And that movement speed for Viper is now wearing off. Oh, that Q. But it's a great catch from Delight. And Peanut's going to lock down that kill. Now, Gumiushi running for the hills. Great lens. But it's not going to dodge a rocket. That is going to go into the back of his head. And T1 won. Back of these two picks is just massive. Yeah, Sejuani value for Humalite Esports cannot be overstated. And once again, this time Peanut having an even better performance than what we saw in game number one. I feel like he's much more present, maybe too present, if we're going to include that uh, play previously. But it's definitely better to go that direction than it is the direction of passivity, I think especially. Play to get to that next level, that unexpected play that could possibly just create that edge. That might be throwing Shelly down here towards this top side as Zayas deals with the minion wave really nicely. The ulti is buffered and it's thrown out by Zayas as well. So he's not gonna die and not going to be able to catch the Yone. Of dealing oh. with the pressure there. You do see them moving over to capitalize, so now with this pressure on the top of the jungle. Oh, yeah, Gumiushi actually sticking around for a little bit longer than he needs to as the Permafrost and Super Mega Death Rocket to give the kill to Viper! So that's a Esports about not being able to deal with tanks at all just in the previous they just game. Double TP. They know Doran doesn't have TP, they just double TP to start it. This is a wild attempt, but it's going down fast. Yep. The uh, control ward in the back of the pit is going to be taken down, but it does give Homolite Esports full information. Hook now going to come on through, Flame Chompers go down. They do manage to secure the Baron, but can they find the fight as they split the Red Sea as in goes the Yone, finds absolutely no one. Double knock up from Carrier is fantastic, and they're on top of Viper in an instant. Double kill for Faker, and this is on top of the Baron they've already taken. Homolite Esports just caught napping, and this is how we completely denies the right side of the fight as Faker follows up with the Emperor's Divide. A beautiful Baron take for T1. Absolutely gorgeously played. They'll now move over, even out the Dragon count as well. The kill count uh, actually just evened out there by T1, but I feel like it is so much here for a little while. 
Not really able to engage or flank with no vision, no teleport wards for Zekka. Yeah, they do have to teleport. So there's at least that. He can teleport onto the ward or something like that. They get a nice knock up onto Doran, but he's just barely inside the mist. They do get the Glacial Prisoner's Carrier. They have stepped too far forward. That is a lot of CC, but he just baited them in. And then the ram comes down. Viper trying to dodge, but he's going to get thrown back into the waiting arms of T1. It's more kills for the god of the mid lane, and T1, they're looking to take more. It just feels like Hollow Knight Esports aren't prepared. T1 firing on all cylinders. They're the ones setting the pace of the game. Where is Zeka in that fight? They're just not present. It feels like they kind of have the game too, just fallen out of control. And T1, they are driving the pace of this game, driving the pace of this and looking to end here and now. Yeah, and frankly, after the beginning of game one, is Zeka here not going to get anything done with this? Yeah, Doran, he's, uh, he's inside his mist, and he will be able to at least protect this Nexus turret for now. 23 minutes into the game. These great hooks. I feel like the only person they would want to go on is Guma, but Guma has cleanse. So even if he does hit a hook on, on Guma, it gets cleansed. They're probably not going to go in on it. So the fact he hit two hooks onto Faker in that passage of play, and neither of them was the signal to go, just shows how rough the state of the game, in, game is for them now. And how powerful Baron is into a copy, comes back online, and Faker can just solo this Baron with the upgraded Leandris. Yep, the uh, Dragon is not going to be long for this world, Dragon. Yeah. As Hummel Life Esports, they definitely need to be towards that Baron, like you were talking about, Wolf. That is exactly where they are. Drake is going to be secure. Yep. Just finish Rabadons as well for Faker, if I'm pulled back in on that, so... And uh, we do have Zekka taking down this Drake, so that's going to even things out as far as Dragons are concerned. If he stays on it, does have Teleport, can join this fight at a moment's notice. As T1, they have got this Baron down extraordinarily low. I think it's actually going to be taken this time. Never mind, they are going to turn the big Teleport as Empress Divide. Going to be flashed out of the ulti avoided once again. As Zekka also gets himself out of trouble. Doran going golden, but he is so incredibly low and will be taken out. The hook comes in and there is another Ram to come down. Peanut flashing away, and this time the Searing Charge is not going to do it. But Delight is not going to be so lucky. The double knockup is gigantic from Zekka, who once again drifts away from the fight. But Humble Life Esports have lost too much, and T1 have lost no one. They lost no one, no kill. Faker mistimes the ultimate, but Zekka's not able to follow up with anything there. And it's not a trade. We've seen so many of the trades go Humble Life's way. It's one for one. Viper lives. Oh. Not possibly engaged on here as Jonas Strong is giving us the full zoom. That is massive. The snare is back up. Going to be taken out at the same time as the Baron. Gumeyushi with the fancy moves. And T1 are going to march up the mid. It's open, so this could just be doubling him for T1 before Zekka's even back up. Whoa, uh, Doran not immune. Uh, I can confirm. Taking a lot of damage here from Faker with that Leandri's anguish. And T1 gonna take their first Nexus turret. That was dead in a blink of an eye. One they cannon still in here. position, yeah. Still allowing them to continue to put the pressure on. They can take out this inhibitor here in top side. Two inhibs down, waiting for that next wave. Hanwha life, seven seconds for Zekka, but how much of an impact will his ult really make? It hasn't been his day here. It hasn't been his game. Yeah, there's the ram once again. It is the ulti from Peanut, but not able to interrupt the call of the Forge God. Now Doran doing a lot of work with his scissors as Peanut able to get back, but that's not a reset for Viper. Just barely not able to get it done, and the Yone falls down. It's under the locks, that one up, and now it's his turn to pop up in the fight. Faker finds a triple just immediately, and T1 moved to that point. These were some of the best highlights from today's LCK 2024 Spring Split matchup. Which moment was your favorite? Let me know in the comment section below. This is OP, and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.